As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. We, UFC fans, are the poor people. And Dana White is the wicked ruler, treating us like some, he's some roaring lion, acting like we're not going to do anything when we keep getting WMMA main events. I'm sorry for putting out this pigs video so late, but I was literally holding off on it on the off chance, on the saving grace that they would add a new main event. They didn't. Here I am covering Manot Furot versus Aaron Blanchfield fight night in Atlantic City. I am still excited for the card. It's looking like it actually should be pretty good. There's quite a lot of sleeper matchups on it. Like the prelims start out with a great bantamweight prospect fight between Keelan Lochran and Angel Pacheco. It's going to be an absolutely insane battle to start off the event. So I'm going to be live right at the start of the card for Atlantic City. If you're looking for a chill, laid-back fight companion, hop into my stream. I'll be live right around 7 p.m. Eastern time this Saturday. Drop a like on the video if you want to help out with the algorithm. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I post the widest and objectively the best MMA content on MMA YouTube. If you're not subscribed, you're missing out. We'll get into my actual full card breakdown here. But before we do that, if you are interested, we have a topology group on this channel. It's like a fantasy MMA leaderboard picks thing competition. It's free to play, free to join. We have the second biggest group in the world, and we are quickly coming for that number one spot. The winner of each week's UFC event gets a shout out in my weekly UFC recap video. It's a fun way to make events like Blanchfield versus Fiora a little bit more exciting and make you look at some matchups you may not have been that interested in before. So if you are interested, there's a link in the description of the video and we'll get into my actual breakdown here. Like I said earlier, the prelims start out with Keelan Lochran versus Angel Pacheco. Angel versus Kowlin. Because first of all, this is America at the end of the day. And if you're spelling your name C-A-O-L-A-N, it's Kowlin. It's not Keelan. If you want it to be Keelan, it's K-E-L. K-E-E-L-E-N. There's like five different ways you can spell Keelan. C-A-O-L-A-N is not one of them. And in hell, it's just Angel. It's just Angel. I'm a little bit more... I'll make a little bit more accommodations for my Latinos, but not today, my friend. Angel versus Kowlin is going to be a very fun fight to start off the, the prelims for Atlantic City. Uh, Kowlin's the favorite in this one, kind of for obvious reasons. Well, not really. They're both coming off of a loss. Kowlin losing to Taylor Lapolis at his UFC debut. Angel Pacheco losing a very crazy fight on Dana White Contender Series to Danny Silva, which he still got signed off of. Both men got a contract off them, and Angel Pacheco was gritting through right to the end with like an ear hanging off, and he was eating knees because they were allowing grounded knees at that Cont Dana White Contender Series episode. He was eating grounded knees. I think Mark Smith like stopped the action for two seconds, but then gave position back to Danny Silva, and Danny Silva still blasted knees on him and stuff. That might have been what caused the ear issue, but regardless, he's extraordinarily gritty. I do not see Kowlin finishing him. So... To be honest, I see Kowlin getting broken over three. I could see him taking the first, but Angel Pacheco's good. Dude, they're, they're both good guys, but I think people are definitely sleeping on Angel in this one, and I think he's going to pull ahead in the second and third. He's going to win a decision. I think it's going to be a fun, fun fight. It's going to be a great way to start the card. So you might as well be in uh, watching the fights and in my live stream when that fight is going on. Andre Petrovsky versus Jacob Malkoon is the next fight on the card here. And listen... I'm torn on this one. I'm really split on this one. Both guys are equally dog poo in my mind. Both guys only have about the space in their brain to fit a walnut, a little capuchin monkey brain hole in their cranium filled with monkey brains. Listen, I think Malcoon will get the better of the scrambles. They will tangle up, and Malcoon will get the better of them. And Malcoon is not the type of guy who doesn't land, gra land ground upon. In other words, Jacob Malkoon does take advantage of positions and he will land, you know, he has stiff, short ground and pound shots that can cause a lot of damage. He's good with getting those off. 
I don't think Andrew Petrovsky is going to be able to like steal rounds from him. So I'm going to take Jacob Malkoon by decision in this one. I'm definitely torn on it, though. Um, both these early fights on the card definitely could get wrong. But let's keep on going. We're at the first WMMA fight. This is Melissa Gatto versus Duda Kova. Bunda Kova. Staph infection in my Bunda Kova. Okay, listen, I don't think Victoria Dudikova is going to win this fight. I think Melissa Glado is a little bit better than her. Jin Frey is dog, dog, poop, and she gave Doug Dudikova a tough fight. I know Gatto's riding those two losses in a row. I don't care. Whatever. I'm taking Gatto by decision in this one. It's WMA at the end of the day. Let's move on up. Ipo Aslan versus Anton Turkali. This is Rigo's sleeper fight on the card. This is the people's main event. The Riga's main event. We are all big Anton Turkali fans, uh, most of the people on my channel. And we are just excited to see him come back and get back to his winning ways against Ipo Aslan. Now, if you don't know, these guys have fought outside of the UFC before. And Anton Turkali mogged him and subbed him. So I don't know what anyone has seen in Ebo Aslan in those three plus years that suggests he's now got up to the lever level that he can beat Anton Turkali. Just because Anton Turkali, the pleasure man, is losing to Jailton Almeida, the mega pleasure man, Vitor Petrino, future light heavyweight champ, possibly future light heavyweight goat, and then, yeah, Tyson Pedro's dog, it's a crap loss. And to see Tyson Pedro retire after getting worked in his next fight, not the best look. But it's, it's, it is what it is. It was like a quick, fluky shot on Anto Dracali. And I would say the pleasure man wins 9 out of 10 times against Tyson Pedro. And who is laughing last? Who had the last laugh in that Tyson Pedro versus Anton Dracali beef? Anton Dracali, man. He's still got a job. Tyson Pedro is... Hasn't changed his clothes or had a shower in three weeks. His wife's extremely worried about him. The kids are asking him, hey, mommy, why is dad not coming out of the bedroom? The ghost of the pleasure man always wins. And he's going to be Ipo Aslan. I'm thinking, submit, submit him again, bro. Big muscle monkey Turk. He's got nothing for the pleasure man. Round two, submission for Anton Turkali. We've got Dennis Bazookia versus Connor Matthews next. Now, this is, should be a good, fun fight. Bazookia always brings it. And so does Matthews, man. He had a great, fun fight against uh, Francis Marshall on Contender Series or whatever, right? Uh, he's since gone on, come back to winning ways. Got his own Contender Series win now, and he's making his UFC debut. Bazookia is kind of poo. He's had his UFC debut. He's 2-0 and in the UFC. He, you know... Sarah, a lot of people say Sarah Longo has about three or four good fighters that have come out of their gym. Dennis Bazuki is not one of them, unfortunately. I'm taking Connor Matthews in this fight to get that upset over Bazookia. It's a pick em fight at the moment, and I think Connor Matthews is a real good... Uh, he's got some plus money value to him, plus 105 or whatever right now. Matthews all day long. Bazuki is dog poop. Um, yeah, I don't really have much more to say about that. Oh, who gets who else is dog poop? Herbert Burns versus Julian Arce. Dude... Julian Arce, KO, round two. Once he breaks him, maybe earlier, round one. Herbert is a crybaby and a quitter and just not a fighter. I don't know why he's in there. I guess he can't. Hey, can't you just become an accountant or something, dude? Why does everyone who has a brother who's a UFC fighter have to be like, oh, that's such a... Your brother's a dirtbag. If he looks at the things that you've accomplished and wants them and is, like, jealous of them. And, hey, you're, I guess you're a good brother for just... Bringing your, your shitty brother along with you. It's like Johnny Walker and then now Walter Walker is coming to the UFC. Oh, uh, yeah, he's going to have a lot of success. Screw Herbert Burns. Uh, screw Gilbert Burns, to be honest. Screw the whole Burns clan. Julian Arce, second round submission over little crybaby Herbert. All right. Let's move up to Vernage and Jaroba versus Lupi Godinez. Lupi Godinez should have been the fighter of the year in 2023. Giving that to Izzy, whoever got it, is crazy. When she fought four times, won four times. I think she had a couple finishes in there too or whatever. One finish or whatever. Regardless, she turned around like crazy. She had a crazy active year last year. And she's actually a skilled WMMA fighter. She's one of the rare, good, well-rounded, good mix of skills, good fight IQ. And she's a Canadian mamacita. All right. I'm taking Lupi Godinez to send that swamp monster back to the swamp verna jandaroba is getting battered 
and masked up by my girl Loopy over three. I'm taking Loopy by decision, dominant decision. Nate the train is back. You better get off the tracks because this train ain't slowing down until Jamal Emers puts him unconscious in the third round because that's how I see the fight going. And I think Jamal Emers is going to win. Sorry to all my caboose boys, as the Nate the Trains fans call themselves. Listen, Nate the Train's good, and uh, he's decent, right? He's like that decent, like kind of like Bill Algio level or whatever. Probably a little bit below Algio. I don't want to disrespect my boy Algio. He's fighting Kyle Nelson later on the card. Nate the Train's all right, though, right? He can take some damage, but his chin is suspect, and you can't really catch him on it. It's not like he's just got one spot. He's got a few spots you can tag him on the chin. His recovery is insane. But to be honest, with how they've been stopping fights nowadays, they don't really even give you a chance if you have recovery. Like, if they're not letting Yeri pull it back, they're not letting... Uh, Nate the train, pull it back, especially in Atlantic City or whatever. Maybe they'll be more likely to do those, give you the chances on Contender Series or in the Apex and stuff like that. But I think they'll stop it if Nate Lammer gets sparked really hard by Jamal Emmers. And I do think Emmers should be able to get him by the third. But if not, I'm confident that Emmers can take a decision over Nate as well. It's like Emmers is stupid and he makes a lot of stupid fight IQ moves. But it's not like Nate isn't stupid with that stuff too. Like if both guys make bad decisions in the octagon and have made bad decisions that have caused them fights in the past or have made fights more difficult than they need to be for them. And it's not like Nate Landwehr is the type of guy who seizes on an opportunity when it's when he sees that mistake made, right? So I'm taking Jamal Emmers. I think he's going to find the KO or TKO in the third round. We can move on up to the actual main card. It starts out with Chidi and Jaquani versus uh, Reese McKee, the Skeletor. Dude, Chidi, you know what's funny is Chidi and Jaquani has the voice that Kennedy and Zuchukwu should have. And the attitude. Kennedy and Zuchukwu has the voice and personality of a timid Nigerian schoolboy. I think Kennedy is going to beat... Reese McKee. If it goes long, though, I'm a little bit worried for Kennedy. I think the first is going to be an extremely violent, quick round. I think Chidi's going to come out trying to hmm, get a highlight reel. And Reese is like the perfect guy to do it. These weight sucked out Skeletor guys, they don't have chins. Very, very, very rarely. Especially when they're like this. It's not like he's like naturally should be here. He should be up at middleweight or something. Right? I'm going to take Chidi and Jukawani sparking out the Skeletor. Lanklet, Lank Maxine, health complications, bomb, Reese McKee in the first round, violent knockout. Let's move on up to Kyle Nelson versus Bill Algio. Listen, I'm picking Kyle Nelson in this fight. This is kind of one of those pick em fights on the card. Um, and I do think Bill Algio is good, as I was saying earlier. I don't think he's like a, a can or a bomb or anything he's definitely a journeyman which is a compliment especially to be a ufc journeyman kyle nelson though on the other hand is like improving like kyle nelson was at the point where he may have become a can but bro is improving he's getting wins where he shouldn't he's getting dog wins and he's looking good in his last performances bro's doing everything we want to see out of a fighter in his prime and he's a rego subscriber and rego enjoyer kyle nelson is a riga kyle the riga Nelson, I haven't heard anything about this fight. He hasn't leaked anything to me, James Kraus style, but I have had confirmation from someone in Kyle Nelson's gym that he is a rigger. So let's go, my boy Kyle. This is not why I'm picking him. I genuinely do think he's going to beat Bill Algio. I do not think he's a lock, though. Hey, 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 I'm keeping it objective. I think Kyle is just better than Bill Algio that little bit, and he's making those necessary improvements, and I think it'll favor him in this fight. I think he'll be able to get that decision victory over Bill Algio. Let's move on up to Nursultin Ruzaboya versus Cedricus Dumas. This is one of those fights where Cedricus Dumas almost should win. Hey, on paper. On paper, Cedricus Dumas is the much better fighter. Not really, though, especially not in their recent fights. You're only really as good as your last fight, and Nursultin is kind of a journeyman by all means definitely can level almost journeyman but he's been going he's riding some decent momentum and stuff like that and Cedricus Dumas is one of the stupidest men to ever step into the octagon so I'm gonna take Risa Boya by first round submission I think he's just gonna get it done capitalize on those moments not give Dumas any chances to pull himself into that fight run through him dog walk him it's gonna be embarrassing Dumas probably out of the UFC shortly let's move on up to the featured fight we have Bruno Silva versus Chris Weidman Chris Weidman coming back here and listen hey I'm not one of those guys who wants to see these old legends retire I like to see them go out on their shield because like they have bills to pay they have money this guy they're like 
30, 48, 40. Like, they're in their late 30s and 40s, these guys, when people start going, get them out of here. They need to retire. Tony needs to get gone. He should be banned from competing. Chris Weidman's going to get hurt again. He should be banned from competing. Hey, guess what, dummies? This is their job, and they need money, and not everyone can go out and start a gym and make that be successful. There's only so many gyms you can have, and not everyone is living in a location where they can start a camp and stuff like that. And you, Is Chris Weidman really the best guy to teach you about karate and stuff? You know what I mean? No. So... He also, he's not going to become a real estate agent like a guy Quint. Like, some of these guys need to fight, and they don't want to have a career change necessarily. They just want to stack up money so they can actually retire. Maybe he's got to pay for his college, kids' college funds. Maybe, maybe he's got some stuff he wants to buy. Maybe he's got some jet skis he wants to buy, a, a cottage or something in the summer he wants to buy. Let these guys fight because guess what? You encouraging them to retire just gets them out of the spotlight. It gets them out of your gaze, and it puts them into a... B League's promotion, like PFL or LFA or something like that, because that's where a guy like Tony or Weidman will go. I know Weidman's saying he might retire if he loses this fight. I don't think he will. I don't think he should. I think he should come back and fight again in the UFC. I do think Bruno Silva's going to win. Bruno Silva's okay. He's like that UFC debut journeyman they will give you. Like, they gave him Alex Pereira, right? They gave a share of bullet to him and stuff. And these are guys that they have a lot of hype behind them, a lot of potential. And if you can really beat Bruno Silva in a dominant way or whatever like that, even just get past him, it does kind of show your level for the UFC. He's a good journeyman, good gatekeeper in that regard. He has beat Brad Tavares, whereas Chris T Weidman just lost to Brad Tavares, right? And Brad Tavares, I consider also kind of around that level. Maybe a little, I consider Brad Tavares maybe just a, before just a little bit higher than Bruno Silva. Now probably slipped out. He's been replaced by Robocop after losing to him. Um, you know what I mean? But he's right around that Tavares level. And I see Chris Weidman losing to Bruno Silva. I see Bruno Silva being able to work those legs. He's got more finishability. Like he's got more finishing intent than Tavares. And so if he does hurt you later in the fight, if he can work those legs, compromise you, he's going to try to finish you. So I do see Bruno Silva getting a finish later in the fight. I'm taking the third round. And um, I hope Chris Weidman comes back though, bounces back because I can't see him getting a win. We'll move on up to the co-main event. Vicente Luque versus Joaquin Buckley. Aneurysm Maxer versus Stink Maxer. In case you didn't know, Vicente Luque had a brain bleed. Uh, everything should be good. No, I don't mean to laugh at him in any thing about that. It's, just, it's like crazy. And he's such a chad that he's still coming back to fight. Shout out Vicente Luque. And then Joaquin Buckley is a stink maxer. Doesn't wash, doesn't change, rolls around on disgusting mats. Apparently people don't want to grapple with him, inspire with him and stuff because he stinks like such dog poo. But uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup here. Now, the question here is, is Vicente Luque going to have really the grappling to be able to to mitigate the striking advantage and the power advantage that Joaquin Buckling will have in this fight. And that's the real question, and I personally don't think so. I know we saw him ragdoll RDA or grapple grape RDA in, the, in his last outing and stuff like that, but RDA is blown up lightweight. Joaquin Buckley coming down to 170, he's arguably not a real middleweight, but he could never make lightweight. Like, he would completely have to change his physique, lose all his muscles and crap like that, right? So... It's a little bit of a different question. And is, he, is, is that going to be enough for Vicente Luque to avoid the damage that Joaquin Buckley should be able to get on him? He's, a, he's, he's an explosive and dynamic striker at times. And he also has some decent boxing at times. So we've seen him outstrike uh, Morono, right? So, and Morono's like got those fundamentals down pat. I'm going to take Joaquin Buckley in this one. And I think he's going to finish Vicente Luque by the second round. And it, some, it, it may be earlier, but I think by the second round, I'm taking second round KO for Joaquin Buckley. Vicente Luque doesn't move his head. And if you're going to be getting cracked like that, uh, even if all your brain issues are sorted and stuff like that, I just don't... Vicente Luque can't really take that crazy amount of damage. And he's doesn't move his head enough. So I'm, I'm taking Joaquin Buckley by probably a pretty vicious KO. And now we've got a very, in my personal opinion, not an interesting matchup in the slightest. Aaron Blanchfield is men on Fiorot for the main event. I'm just going to take Aaron Blanchfield. She's younger. I think she's going to have the better, like the more energy, more output. And she also is going to be able to mix it up. She's worse in the striking than men on Fiorot, but I think she's going to be able to get done. She's more submission threat, better grappling. So if she does need to tangle up with men on Fiorot, she's going to be able to. Uh, she's going to be able to mix it up, so but I do not see it being a fun fight. I don't think Blanchfield is going to get the submission. If she does, hey. If she doesn't, it's going to be a boring five-round decision. Two weeks back-to-back, -back, WMMA main events, guaranteed 25 minutes to end the night. Like, it doesn't even make sense. You should put this actually before Vicente Luque and Buckley because it incentivizes us to actually watch that and want to be there. Last time I was watching, last week I just completely lost interest. And I'm sorry. 
But it's like, oh, yeah, we just had the Cavs versus the Heat. And now, hey, we have a bonus fifth quarter with WNBA. It makes zero sense. The mixed sport. I'm a proponent. I'm calling for this right now. No more women's flyweight. No more women's bantamweight. Mixed divisions. Why do we have two separate Two exact same weight classes within the same promotion. It makes no sense. It's like if Bell, like, do we have two? It's like we'd have two bantamweight divisions: one for the good male bantamweights, one for the shit male bantamweights. And then we have a champ there too. But the the shit chip male bantamweight would never be able to beat even the number fifteen ranked good bantamweight. It's like Man on Fura and Blanchfield will get absolutely the crap kicked out of them by like Jeff Molina, JP Bays, Chin and Ross. Let's merge the divisions, and I want to see how many WMMA fighters are ranked at 125 and 135 after the fact. Let me know what you guys think about the card. It's actually got some fun fights on it. What fights are you looking forward to most on the card? And if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I post a wide variety of MMA content, and I'll be live for the event this Saturday, March 30th, around 7 p.m. for the first fight for that Angel Pacheco Kowlin Lochran fight. And I'd like to give a big shout out to all my channel members. Without you guys, the channel would not be possible. And a special thanks for my Lion Tier members. Coltus Gordon, Clarence, Mike Brannigan, Javier, Patrick Hall, Droid C, Jean-Paul Dehoria, Jack Clash, Wings of Heart Problems, Boss Gags, Maximus Decimus ADA, Hans on Fire, Uniform Down, Franz, Jesse on Estrogen, Abdiel, TKH, Anti Rigo, Girth, Ninja Choke, David Branica, Ghost Diaz, Sunny Nihilus, Andros Basileus, Guy Dude 5, Dark Star, Pigger, A Man Zero, Cockin' Ball, Lil Gloom, Brett Williams, Carter, Jace Prod, Johan Liebert, Bogdan, Frenchie Loves Fights, Mogwonk Zerg Zerg, G Money 88, DJ Giggles, Jimmy D, Skoza, and Cody Cox. Demon Bobby. Demon Mommy.